the morning started. There we go. Our class is four weeks. Um, my office hours are still Tuesday from 9.30 to 5 o'clock. So those of you that are in the Tulsa area, if you ever have any questions, you want to come in and talk to me, that'd be great. Um, come in anytime, 9.30 to 5, I'm up on the second floor. And normally what they do is they have you check in at the front desk, they'll page me, we'll send you up the elevators and you can come see my little office. So it'd be great if you want to. Um, I've, I've tutored students there before, I've helped out with some computer issues, I can help out a little bit with computer issues. Um, so I'd be glad to assist you. Um, also, I wanted to, to kind of point out that email is actually my preferred method of communication. It's um, the one that I actually check most often is probably the email. You're also welcome to send me Facebook messages, text messages, and if it's a big emergency, please do call me. That'd be fine. That'd be fine. Um, on Tuesdays, I'm in Tulsa 9.30 to 5. However, I'm normally at home, and you can contact me seven days a week from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. I'm very flexible, guys. I don't mind if you contact me on the weekends. So just a little bit about our course, our discussion boards, also still do on Wednesday night at midnight. Um, please do put a little substance in that so I can understand exactly what you're talking about. I read through a few of the emergent curriculum posts, and they were very good. Good job. Um, and then you also need to respond to your classmates by Sunday at midnight. Our quizzes are just as they were in the last course as well. You have unlimited attempts. And guys, if you have a chance, go ahead and take it a second time or a third time because each time you will get that information in your brain a little bit better, a little more memorized. And each time you will probably raise the points. You don't have to worry about taking it one time and then not doing as well the second time because when I set it as a limited attempt, it will only take the highest grade. Okay, so whatever the highest grade is, that's what you'll get. So please do take it until you're happy with it and take it to where until you feel like you really have that information down. Um, Final project. I always like to start with the beginning in mind, as Dr. Kirk said. Um, our final project for this course for curriculum development is going to be learning center curriculum planning. And I really just have one slide on this right now. Uh, what I'd like to bring up is that most of the components in this, in this uh, curriculum planning final project are going to be things that you will be doing during the course as well. So you're going to get practice on each one of these before you put it together as your final project. So you're going to be making four things basically. And this would be like if you were um, being a lead teacher or being maybe assistant director in a learning center you might have to design some of these things. So the first thing is you're going to come up with a schedule for a full day child care program. So you pick what age group. So you could have infants, toddlers, two, threes, preschool. So you pick your age group and then you're going to design a one day program. And, and the good news is, is you you look on figure 8-1 and figure 8-2 in your book, there are examples there. You're basically arranging how things happen through the day, how long each center time is, or how long play time is, or how long music time is. It's up to you. So you're going to be doing this. And I do want each of these to be original works. You can, of course, use Maybe you already work in a center where you have these items. You can use that as inspiration, but I would like for you to come up with your own on your own, okay? So look at those examples on your full-day child care program. Next, you're going to create an activity web, and we're going to be doing this, I believe it's in week two or three. We'll talk more about the activity web, and it's really just a, sort of a brainstorming idea 
of how to come up with activities for your class. Also, in number three, the concept web is similar. Uh, the only difference is in the activities, you're coming up with 12 activities that you can do in your class on the topic of the, the topic um, other than the seasons, because we will be using the seasons as a theme when you first do your activity web and concept web. So you're going to pick a topic, you're going to create this activity web, and if you want to, you can just draw this out on a sheet of paper, use nice dark marker, and you'll notice the term web in their name, just because it really is a web. We're going to start with the central concept, and then you will draw out from the center these different activities that you've come up with. You may have used this when you were in junior high or high school to come up with ideas. So, Activity Web, we'll talk about it even more later on. Concept Web, same thing, you're going to be coming up with seven concepts instead. And if you were to draw this out by hand, take a picture of it with your phone, then you can then add that picture um, to maybe a Word document or Google Docs so that I could see it. Um, and this is the way I've done it in the past, guys. You may want to use it this way as well. I've taken a picture of it with my phone, pasted it as a private message in Facebook to myself, then went on my computer, downloaded that picture, and then put it in a Word document. So there's always a way to do it. There's probably an easier way, too, though. <laughs> but, that's how, but that's how I do it. <laughs> Google Docs from your phone. You may be able to, Jessica. Yeah, that's what I was just saying. You may have to send it to yourself. Um, you could take a picture and send it to yourself on Facebook or just as an email on your phone. And then you could pull it up on your computer, pull your email up on your computer and download that picture. So, yes, yeah, there's, there's always ways to kind of go around that. <laughs> to get pictures onto your computer. I've had to do it many times. I'd be happy to walk you through it, too. Okay, and then the last thing is you're going to create a weekly lesson plan. Um, and I have put examples on our course page of weekly lesson plans, and one is set up so that you can fill it out online and then save it. So this might be the one you want to use, I think it would be easiest. So for the classroom you've chosen, up in number one, you've picked your age group, infant, toddler, two, three, preschool, whatever age group you're wanting to work with. Um, you then make a weekly lesson plan. And you can use your activity web that you created and your concept web that you created to come up with ideas for what activities to do that week. You can also use your full day child care program schedule that you came up with in number one as a guide for when these activities will happen. You could um, use the, the pre-made lesson plan that I've given you a link to, or if you wanted to, you could create a graph on your own using Google Docs or Word would be fairly easy. And that way you can put your activities in the exact order that you would like them to be in. Okay? So that was just kind of an overview. That's what we'll be doing at the end. And just know, like I said, we will be practicing each of these as we go along. So it will become clearer as we go along in our course. Because right now you're probably going activity web. What, what is that? <laughs> so I'll show you here soon, okay? Our student question of the week. Do I need to take my courses in a certain order? Um, and the answer is yes, under most circumstances. Our courses are offered in a rotational basis. We have eight courses, and when I finish teaching number eight, I come back around to the first one, which is ECE 101, um, which we had back in December. So ECE 101 is actually the intro course. But you do not have to start in ECE 101. You can start each month at any time. You can hop in 
uh, and began a new ECE course. So they're offered in order, and you need to try to follow that order. That's why it sort of gets difficult sometimes if you maybe take a leave of absence for a month, or if you were to um, uh, flunk a class maybe and then need to retake it. Um, what we usually do then is we can set you up in an independent study course, meaning you'll still be taking the classes as you normally do, but you would be the only one in the class. So it's still fine, but I sort of feel like you don't get as much um, interaction, of course, with other students than you normally would. So we want to try to keep you on track and try to keep you in those eight courses as we go. Hope that kind of kind of makes sense there. Oh, great. Fantastic, Bailey. Yay. <laughs> See, there's so many things that come up even through the course of the day. I learn things every day, and I want you guys to, to learn those too. Okay, Chapter 8. Real quick, let's go over Chapter 8, Scheduling and Curriculum Planning. And this is in our Introduction to Early Childhood Education book. I believe it's abbreviated as Intro to ECE on my course connection. And if you look at it week each week in our course, you'll notice that we'll be hopping through the different books. So pay attention to what book we're in and what chapter we're in. So this week it is chapter eight, and we're talking about scheduling and curriculum planning. So what I'd like for you guys to do, let me see if I can get my letter board up here. It's been so long since I've used it. Here we go. You guys, give me an idea. Think about an early childhood program that you know. Maybe you went to a program. Maybe you have a child in a program or you work in a program. It could be daycare, preschool, um, Mother's Day out, whatever. And give me an idea of what are some of the activities that happen through the day. Let's see how many we can come up with. What are some of the activities? I don't need I don't mean specific activities. Keep it pretty general. Pretty general. What do we do through the course of the day? Crafts. Yeah. Definitely. You might. Oh, I almost missed it. Reading. Definitely. Coloring. I love coloring. Did any of you guys get adult coloring books for Christmas? <laughs> Outside time. Yay, Bailey did. I still really want one. And Sarah, you did too, didn't you? Oh, you guys are too fast for me. Painting. Let me see. Let me see here. Okay. Painting, yes. What else might we have during the day? What else might we have? Crafts, reading, coloring, outside, paint, uh, painting. Singing, you definitely might have singing as part of your daily activities. Dancing is wonderful. Good one, Katrina. Clean up. Yes. <laughs> Clean up is very important. Learning time. Exactly. Cooking. Oh, I've known some programs that have had some fabulous cooking times. Yes. Um, letters of the day, wonderful. Oh, you guys are coming up with some great ones. Very good. So that's just that's just a, a short list, really, of some of the things that we might curriculum might incorporate into our scheduling and curriculum. And you know, in this course, think of what would you do if you ran your preschool or daycare center? What would you do? What what were the what were some of the things that you would really like to see offered? So we're going to talk about different curriculum. We're going to talk about different activities, and just try to keep that sort of in in the back of your head. Things that you could do. So if we hop over here. Here's some of the components, and let's see how we did on our list. Activity time, yes, we had lots of activities. Large group time and small group time. So depending on the age group, you may have one or the other or both. 
Um, outdoor activities, clean up. Katrina, you know that meals is one that we didn't come up with, but meal time is an activity, yes, because we're teaching them about how to set the table, how to serve their foods, how to um, sometimes eat with fork and spoon, how to how to drink out of a cup properly. There's lots of things that we do at mealtime that's actually an activity and talking about the foods and where they come from. Nap or rest time is important for so many of these younger age groups. And transitioning time, when we're going from, maybe we're going from meal, we just had lunch and it's time to go outside, have some outside time, we'll have certain things that we do in between um, to try to get that schedule down for them so that they know they need to be able to predict what's going to happen next because that makes them feel more at ease, more relaxed if they know each day. A different day in preschool and daycare can really throw them off sometimes. You know, we look at it as a fun, free day, but to them, it's a little scary. You know, what's going on? Why are we going to this different place? So that's an idea, again, some of the things that we might do in our program. Now, here's a few guidelines um, for pro program scheduling. Now, think about... Um, number one on our final project as we talk through these. So we want to alternate our active times and our quiet times and schedule those accordingly. Um, you're not probably not going to want to have a big crazy outdoor activity time right before nap time because they need uh, more of a quiet time to slow down to get ready for nap time. So it's our order is very important. You want to balance child initiated versus teacher initiated activities. So we want to have a schedule, but we also want them to feel like they're sort of in control of a little bit of that schedule. So we're not always telling them how to play or where to play. We want to give them lots of options. We're going to be aware of uh, the activity levels, the ages, and the developmental levels of our children. And of course, we want to keep in mind, if we have any special needs children, what might need to be different for them on their schedule for, through the day, or what can be the same. And we want to keep them the same as much as we can. Be aware of the size of the group, the program times, the start times, the end times. Um, some of our programs, we have a definite time when lunch has to happen because they have other groups coming right after that as well. And we also want to think about seasonal considerations, the holidays that are coming up. If it's winter, if it's summer, you know, what the weather is going to be at, like outside as well. So some of our guidelines. So if we think about that, what differences might you need to consider when planning a schedule for infants and toddlers? Give me a few ideas. What schedule differences might we have for infants and for toddlers? I know some of you have worked in those type of rooms before, too, so I'll bet you'll have some ideas. What's something that would be different for infants and toddlers? Could infants do cooking? Nope. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you know, an infant may not necessarily pay attention during story time. That's right. Um, it's important to read to them, and they will naturally um, gravitate to our voice, but they also might get preoccupied with their toes or something else, and that's okay, whereas a toddler may be able to focus a little bit more for a short amount of time. That's right. So that could be a difference, yeah. What else? Brittany's got some coming up. And as I mentioned, we may not be able to have a cooking time with, with infants, but we definitely could with toddlers. 
Infants can really have a set meal time because when they are hungry, they need to eat them. That's right, Brittany. I, I'm a big believer in that. And, you know, people have tried to sort of force infants into a certain schedule. And uh, that that can be really frustrating for the infant. So, yeah, when it's, when it's time for the diaper change, it needs to happen. When it's time for their meal, it needs to happen. That's right. Whereas toddlers may be able to wait for snack time and lunch time. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, so those are just a few differences. Very good, guys. Um, also, activities that we would plan for infants and toddlers would, of course, be different. We probably wouldn't have a lot of group time for infants, but we would for toddlers. And then what differences might you need to consider when planning a schedule? for school age children. So think about preschool or kindergarten. Try to keep those two in mind. What planning differences would we have there? What would we have to keep in mind? Less play time. Oh, Jessica, unfortunately, that's true. That's true. When they get into school, they don't have as much play time. They don't have as much recess time. Um, attention span will be longer. Yes, Bailey, very good. Um, so activities could vary. Toddlers wouldn't be able to do the same thing for a longer amount of time. That's right. Then school age. School age can, can do maybe longer projects, longer craft time, longer learning center time. Yep, exactly. So just um, this is just to get you thinking about some of the differences that we have in these, in these schedules. And you'll need to keep this in mind when you're planning your schedule as well. Very good, guys. So what is curriculum? That's really what we're covering in this course, we're talking about curriculum. So child development and curriculum should be specific to the age of the child as well as the background of the child. We're not going to use a curriculum that's designed for New York City in rural, rural Oklahoma, probably not, because there's going to be some differences. Um, so we want to think about the background of the child. It could be a religious background. It could be an ethnic background. And, of course, we want to think about how old they are so that the curriculum is appropriate specifically to them. Culture and curriculum include information activities relevant to each child's family culture. And we've talked about this in previous classes, that you want to look at your class and look at that great little rainbow of children out there and go, okay, what's something out of their family that I can include in my class that we could talk about? Because that makes them feel special, and it also helps educate the other children about different families as well. So curriculum is, is the backbone. Some of the types of curriculum we'll be going over, the main two um, categories are thematic curriculum and emergent curriculum. So let's hop back up to thematic just real quick. Um, a lot of centers plan this way, and it can really be great because you can have all these different themes going on in the classroom, your decorations, your activities all tied together. It might be a weekly theme, which would actually be not very long um, and maybe kind of hard to keep up with, or it might be a monthly theme, which is kind of a better idea to have um, a single theme for a whole month. So examples, you might have ocean animals for a month, and you pick out books that deal with ocean animals, and you do activities that deal with them as well. Um, a weekly theme might be colors. Maybe you just talk about the color blue one week. And you can even have the children join in by saying, OK, you need to wear a blue shirt each day if you can. So their clothes could go along 
with uh, the color that you're talking about, and they absolutely love that. I've seen it used in kindergarten programs before, and, and the kids really like it. Um, they Now, not every kid is going to have five different blue t-shirts, but if they at least wear one during the week and they get their color and it's matched up, that's great. You might also have um, family, careers, maybe um, different businesses that are around can help out as well with your theme. Oh, 100 days of school. Yes, they love that. <laughs> and they have to dress as an old person. Oh, I love that, Sarah. I've seen them um, count out 100 things on the 100th day of school, maybe it's 100 Cheerios or, you know, 100 buttons, whatever it is. But I haven't heard about dressing as an old person. I love that. Um, what was it, Brittany? Your cousin's preschool does an alphabet letter each week. That is also a very good idea, guys. It's not like you want to do an alphabet letter each day. That's too confusing. But, yes, if you could spend a whole week on the letter A, they can really focus on that. And you can talk about letters that things that start with the letter A, and they can point out things as well. Yeah. Oh, and they make the trail mix, too. That's great. Where each kid has to bring 100 things to go into the trail mix. I think that's how they did in, in Joplin. That's always fun. So, yes, but the grade school teachers make a big thing about the 100th day of school. <laughs> Okay, so, so there's so many different things out there that you could pick from, and it's fun. And, of course, you can tie in your academics, your science, your math um, with your theme very easily. Now, uh, the other type of curriculum, then, is emergent, which we talked about in our discussion boards. And uh, emergent is more of a project approach in-depth exploration of different topics, it's child-centered, so we're looking at what the child is really interested in. Do they really like dinosaurs? Let's do a project on dinosaurs. Um, do they, are they very artistic? Maybe we need to focus on painting. Maybe we need to focus on doing these different crafts. So emergent is more kind of a go-with-the-flow type curriculum where the teacher and the student are working together. And what I love about that is that the teacher isn't so much in the knowledge giver position. They're in the position of learning from the child as well. So we can always learn things from each other. Um, and of course, we're, we're, we're sneaky teachers, and we can always throw in that math and that science so that they don't know they're learning. It's just fun because we want to keep it fun. So keep those in mind, thematic curriculum and emergent curriculum. It's very natural. Okay? So, goodness, it's 8.38. Um, we're to the last one. Do you guys have any questions? We're talking about curriculum. We're talking about planning. And by the time you get to the end, you're going to be able to do all of these things on your own. Um, before we go really quick, Brittany, are you still there? Fantastic. Now, Brittany, are you the one that is a nanny? Oh, Bailey, you are. I knew it started with a B. <laughs> Okay, Brittany, you've babysat before, but Bailey, um, Bailey, you are the nanny for twins, right? I just wanted to pick your brain real quick, guys. 15-month-old twins, and I think that would be amazing. <laughs> so um, I was a nanny myself for two years for two siblings, and they were, oh gosh, about 15 months apart, I guess. Um, some friends of ours, and it was a fantastic job. I loved being able to spoil these kids and then go back home to my own that had started school already, and I did it in the Joplin area. Well, Dr. Kirk, our president, sends me weekly job openings each week, and I keep seeing more and more jobs um, for nannies in the Tulsa area. And I was wondering if you could give us an idea of the pay range for nannies, how much 
Um, could a nanny expect to make in Tulsa, say, hourly? Do you know just a general a general range there? The last time he sent me job openings, there were probably at least five different nanny openings. And that was that was for one week. So this could definitely be um, a great job for somebody with an ECE background, or maybe just while you're working on your degree, you could do one part time. Now, being a nanny, you don't necessarily have to live there. I didn't. I just went there during the day. Um, in the morning before she left for um, school, she was a school teacher, and then I stayed until the end of the school day. Some, some nannies stay longer into the evening as well. And of course, I took care of the kids, but I also helped take care of the house. Um, I even um, came over sometimes in more of a babysitting aspect if they needed someone for a few hours. So they were always with me. They weren't, they weren't confused by different people. It was really great. Okay, let me see what Bailey has put in. Oh, you gave me all the types of information. I'm loving it. Um, you started when they were three weeks. That is amazing right there. Care.com. Yes, I have noticed. I've noticed so many um, jobs posted on Care.com. And yes, yeah, so the need is insane. <laughs> um, salary pay of, of 500 a week. Often work anywhere between 10 to 15 dollars an hour. Okay, you do live there. I, exactly. It could make things easier. Um, also, watch another eight month old, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, charge $9 an hour, and it depends. Okay, fantastic. You just gave me a lot, a lot of good information. Um, whenever I was in Joplin, I made 19 an hour, and that was to care for two children, but it was part time. So, you know, if I would have been doing that full time, that would be really, really good pay. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I was more of a part-time nanny. So, um, so I want you guys to know that that's an option that's out there. I, whenever I talk in my lectures, I kind of focus on preschool, daycare, grade school, um, Head Start. You know, we focus on these larger programs. But you should also know that um, you can have these um, jobs caring for other people's children in their home. It's not necessarily babysitting. It's, it's a little step above in that you're caring for the children. They um, usually want you to do educational activities with them as well. And so you're definitely in a teaching aspect. And what was, okay, let me see your, your bottom one has a chart that you can follow. Okay, great. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I loved I loved doing it for two years. It was fantastic. You work 60 hours a week, do learning activities along with cooking and cleaning. Uh, me too. I did I did a little bit of laundry for them during the day just to help her um, get caught up. When the kids were napping, um, I was working on my master's degree at the time. So whenever um, uh, when the kids were napping, they didn't mind if I worked on my schoolwork even. So I would bring my laptop with me and try to get an assignment done while they were taking their nap. So we did baby sign language with both of them. Um, very very cool family. Very cool kids. So you guys, please know. Uh, there's there's a lot a, a big need for nannies out there if you if you want to consider that as an area. Thank you, thank you, Bailey, for telling us all that. I because I really wasn't sure um, in the Tulsa area sort of what the pay range was and stuff. That's great. All right, so do you guys have any questions? Are you set? You're good to go. You're ready for the week. No, okay, great. Thank you.
Hey, I will, Sarah. I will. Okay? If I notice assignment slipping, you'll get an email or a Facebook post. It's, it's so easy when you get stressed out. Exactly. Exactly. Have a good night, Bailey. No problem. Hey, and, and Sarah, just know that you can always ask if you need an extension on a due date. I'm always happy to work with the students that uh, are communicating with me. I know things come up. So, bye, bye Katrina. Bye, Brittany. <laughs> So the main thing is just, yeah, talk to me, let me know what's going on, okay? No problem. And you hang in there. Have a good rest of your week. Uh, I hope they get your migraine sorted out. I was so sorry to hear about your employer not letting you off. I read that on Facebook. Oh, your youngest is fighting them now. I'm sorry. Things will level back out soon, I'm sure. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. So she's going to go to the, to the neurologist. Okay. Well, good. I hope they can get something figured out for both you guys. Yeah. It's so hard. That's, that's probably the main thing that's causing so much stress and um you know, make it makes it hard to concentrate too. I know my sister has migraines, and she just has to lay down for a couple days to to help get through them. And sometimes you can't do that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So hang in there, Sarah. Okay. All right. Go get some good sleep. Bye-bye. <laughs>